Get out, border agents, get out. Get your ass off this bus. Franco, get your ass up. We're leaving Vancouver, and we're getting ready to hit this U.S. border. Usually if they smell weed on here, which is most of the time for our buses, because everybody on here is stoners, it just turns into a big inconvenience for the drivers. We just turn this motherfucker upside down and just clean the shit out of it. It's definitely a process going through the border, which we all hate. Everybody that I work with, I have to have an organic relationship with. You have to actually be my friend for me to work with you. Bro, you look like you gained 15 pounds with your shirt on. Bro. You look like you got like an inflation button on your shit. Like you just be pumping your shirt. I look shirt. like I can just knock one, I can knock a nigga out right now. You cool, be cool. pumping his shirt up. 10 4, nigga. <laughs> hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up. I be that pretty motherfucker. Hold on for the rap and tell my nigga switch the bitch and we gon' make it in a second. That's just my brother, you know, we click. We don't never argue, we don't never do nothing. We just bros and we just, we see eye to eye, we level at it. We grown enough to know when each other is wrong or whatever. Y'all know how to party in this motherfucker. Toby, my nigga, man. That's my boy right there, man. He hold me down on the stage. He's my pippin. You know what I'm saying? If I'm Jordan, he's my pippin. Niggas that go on one-offs and five-day road trips and shit, man, ain't no fucking tour, bruh, bruh. You know what I'm saying? If I go anywhere, 12 you there, like, you see 12 you see Lou. That's just how it is. I'm ASAP Lou Banger, Rocky's right-hand assistant. You already know what it is. Lou Banger tapping on the belly and all that. You see me out here, bro, it's popping. Lou is probably the uh, blackest white boy I know. I'm a we met because Lou used to fuck with us so niggas ain't even like know who like ASAP really was like that. Like Lou was around at the early stages. Yo, shout out to homie right here, y'all. Fuck with you. Can he come on stage and rap with us real quick? Yeah. After a while, he just became one of everybody. Like, he was always so helpful and shit. Like, if niggas ever needed him, he was there. So it was just like, we might as well make this nigga, like, you know, my assistant and get him paid for this shit. And ever since then, it's just been me and Lou for the past, like, year and a half, you know, two years now. Can you call Lou for me, please, bro? Hey, Lou. Yo, Lou. Yo, Lou. Lou Baker. Yo, Lou. If I'm up, I'm with Lou. I mean, if I'm asleep, I'm not with Lou, apparently. Why do they look like you look like you going on vacation with family right now? Lou. Lou's going to Disney World, bro. Man, Chubby Chase was. Yeah, he looked like one of the Griswolds. You look like you belong in the movie, Harry and the Henderson. Yo, Lou Griswold. Lou Griswold. Lou Griswold. I'm going to the bag of Lou. Chase is a comedian first, then he's a manager. They license fucking problems already. So they using that so for the film, for a scene in the film. So they want you to do a song for the closing, though. Like the end of the movie, the closing credits. I need Chase around to make me laugh. I'm not saying he's my amusement, but I am saying that if you're having a hard day or a long day, he can uplift your spirit, man. He has jokes all day. I'm about to, I'm about to go scalping, nigga. How much is this? Let me see. One, two. Them <laughs> tickets ain't cheap, <laughs> man. At least like 80 bucks or a buck. Mm, a buck? A $80? It's $200 a ticket, bro. No, how about 500 500 ticket times 25, you know what I'm saying? Gino is also co-manager with Chase. He's the one who keeps all the relationships. Julio Iglesias is that nigga, nigga. I ain't got no beef with Julio Iglesias. That nigga puts shame Everybody. Julio Glacius is like the Jay Z before Jay Z. Dosa Ski jacked Julio Glacius. <laughs> Julio Glacius should go out to the Dosa Ski people. Gino and Chase make sure, you know, everything is just, you know, running steady as far as my career goes. Come on, bro, get him up, bro. Spawn with your brother. Come on, Gino. What time we get to LA? 16 hours. Damn, homie. In high school, you was the man, homie. We gonna be doing some good ass beats tonight, though. I tell you that much. 16 hour drive. Watch what kind of motherfucking like creations we come up with. Like, watch what type of creativity we get. It's just stupid.
the whole time we were touring, we were recording the instrumental album. Me and Hector, Hector Delgado, he's my DJ and my engineer. He does everything with me, he produces with me. He produced Suddenly with me from scratch. Jody with Joey Fats. We did um, Fashion Killer. Everything is just like my mind, how I feel like music should kind of sound, you know? It's laid back, it's slow, it's calm, it's chill, it's druggy, it's cloudy. It brings you back to the first time you ever, you know, got high, like, you know what I mean? It's like everything is purple. It's just like, it's just, it's, it's psychedelic, man. Yeah, so did you start it off with just that and then those came in? Well, yeah, I'm just doing that. It goes right. from the chorus. For me, it's like I need an engineer there to help me, you know, put it to where I need it to be, to edit it, you know? I'm gonna tell you which one to take out, ready? That one. The first boom boom. Everything is from scratch. Like, everything is no samples in this shit. And all these tracks are just the beat. We don't just do like five little sounds, man. Look, look, one, two, look at that. There, there, there. That's all just music. We're, we're making music. So sometimes this nigga just a come up with like just a sound and we'll just like flip it, play it backwards, extend it, cut it short. Like we just make our own sounds out of sounds. This way we don't have to pay nobody for the samples. <laughs> I mean, it's not no secret. Everybody does it, but you know, we doing it. Very special guest in the building. Introduce yeah. yourself, man. Man, I go by the name of that pretty mother. Mother, I'm ASAP Rocky, <laughs> man. What's up? He's got the <laughs> built-in <should. radio laughs> There you go. How's the tour going overall? So far, so good, man. Good feedback, good energy, good crowds. I'm gonna have a good show tonight too. Right. Right. It's <laughs> a fucking yeah. great beat. Hey, thanks, man. That was like my third beat, I, fourth beat I made, man. I'm gonna be honest, I walked in and you were like, man, I'm making beats. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's all dirty, like, you know. It's like, it shows my Houston influence. Yeah. You can tell it, like, me Six more months, I swear to God, I'm gonna be better than all you producers. I ain't gonna have to pay them a dime. That shit is crazy, bro. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna go in real quick. I look like a very wise man. Oh, no. I look like a hoodlum. <laughs> I look like I teach studies of religion or something. Rocky about to hit the stage. It's a great movement, man. You don't meet a lot of rappers that like actually like seem like they care. They care about their fans. They care about being positive. They care about how you're doing. Like people don't do that anymore. Rocky's one of those people that does. Yo, Chase, you got them bitches? They got some fat asses? You should have still checked, bro, bro. A real genuine person, great music, great movement. Respect. Dubai swag. This is the very rare Dubai swag, bro, bro. Is this the everyday uniform or you can switch it up? Nah, I'll switch it up. Up until like I was 11, man, I had a good life, man. I'm not gonna sit here and lie, man, I had it all. As a child, all you want is Jordans and toys and candy and, you know, and clothes and stuff. And my pops used to give me all that shit, man. He was a big time hustler. But like every hustler story, the empire always has a demise and every empire falls. My dad went to jail. They seized all the money, took away everything, and my mom was left with nothing, so we had no choice. The shelter was on 104th and Broadway. It was called Volunteers of America. It was a little difficult, you know, but not that difficult because of the type of parent his father is. Adrian is about family, family first. Rakim is about family. I don't want people to think like 
oh, poor kid, like his whole life he was poor and none of that. I would be lying, man, because everybody go through hard situations, man. Everybody. Ricky Jojo, Jovan Black, he was uh, seven years older than me, but, you know, for the most part, growing up, he was like my only real best friend, you know. Ricky was a G. Ricky was a thug. <laughs> so as his sister, I kind of always had a fear because of his aggressiveness and his attitude. He spent a lot of time in juvenile hall. And when he finally came back, like 17 years old, he was on some blood shit heavy, man. He was blooded out, man. I'm talking about like banging hard. You know what I'm saying? And he kind of made me want to be a blood. Ricky would have been 31 July 5th. But 10 years ago, February 26, Ricky was shot. And he died that same day. I know for a fact my brother has something to do with my success. Even before he died, he had something to do with it, so. I don't know if he felt like that was something that he owed to Ricky to show him that he can do it. But he really got serious about it once Ricky passed. He wasn't Little Rocky anymore. He was doing grown man things. He came back out of jail right before he died, and he told me, he said, this ain't for you. He's like, this, that gang shit is for me. That's, that's not your life. I should have never made you do that. I kind of took it as he was dissing me or saying that I couldn't, like, you know, handle it or something like that. I was mad. I always felt like I had a point to prove to him and stuff. But he was like, nah. He said, what I want you to do is I want you to do that music shit, that rapping shit. Oh. I made the New York Times before I even had a record deal. It was just the first time I ever felt accomplished in my life, ever. I'm very proud, very proud. I feel like this is just the tip of the iceberg. Everybody on this tour just has it right now. I feel like this is a moment in time. I mean, you know, I I'm trying to earn the right to call myself ASAP Jersey one day. <laughs> I'm not even ASAP no more. I'm Black Hate. Yeah. No, 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 Say what's up to the camera. Okay, what's up? <laughs> this is my pop right here, you know what I'm saying? When you actually see your child on TV and, and doing things the way he's doing it, it, it makes you go wow, you know? Look at, look at my little brothers real quick, man. When they get older, you know what they gonna be doing? Fucking all these hoes like me. <laughs> we brought him up to be a humble person, you know, to, to humble himself and, and know most of the time it's not given to you. So if the opportunity presents itself, go and lay the work down and go get yours, you know. This shit is an honor right now. Thank you for coming out and seeing me. I'm hearing it from the best and I'm the future, so I'm representing y'all. Oh, The fact that I made my family so proud, I made my dad proud right before he died, I know my brother's proud. ASAP had a lot of shit in common. Fashion, Texas music, and just being open-minded. When you tell the person the meaning of their name, it's gonna leave an impression on them. People expect me to fuck this up. It's been rough for all of us. And you know, if, if it's one thing I could repeat to myself in my mind is always strive and prosper. Hey, 